I'm thankful, man. This is a wonderful opportunity that God has, has afforded me, and I'm taking fully advantage of it because our kids deserve it. You know, uh, thinking about you and a lot of the issues that you brought up, one of the issues you brought up just the other day is that you had a kid stand up and show his name on the back of the jersey, and you pointed out how the SWAC needed to do that more with these players. You've been willing to attack a lot of issues. You brought that up. You got upset at the media because some people didn't want to call you Coach Prime. I'm your brother. And I, I, you coach prime now. You coach prime. I'm still going to always see you at prime time. <laughs> so much so, I'm almost allergic to having you on in the daytime because prime time don't belong on in the daytime. That's how big time he is. But nevertheless, you coach prime. Explain to our audience why it was so important to you that that distinction was highlighted. Coach prime instead of prime time. Because you made a big deal out of it. I totally agree with you. But I want you to tell the audience why. Well, it was a big deal out of coach. Forget the prime. It's just a big deal out of coach. I'm, I'm from the old school. Man, we grew up respectful and honorable. I mean, every parent uh, or pe person older was a mister or missus or ma'am or, or no ma'am or yes, sir. Or no. That's just the way I grew up. And we, I, I can't think of a, a person who's ever coached me that I've been entitled by his name or a person of authority that I didn't give him the proper um, authority or label that they deserve. My doctors are doctor such and such. You know, the nurses are nurse such and such. Our teachers are missus and mister. So, to just call someone by their name to try to belittle what I've accomplished and what I've worked for, that's just not right, and I wasn't going to stand for it. I, I've never stood for foolishness, so why would I stand for it now? I'm, I'm not going to do that. And they made a big deal out of it, but it was real. It was authentic, yeah. and I stand and by, by it. And regarding the names on the jerseys, you highlighted that why? Uh, man, you, you know when I got to Florida State how much it meant to see that jersey hanging in my locker with my family name on it. Mm. I mean, because when I left, I told my mama, you, you're never going to have to work again. I'm going to make enough money. You're going to have to retire one day. And that family name meant something to me. And to see these guys out there working their butts off, committed and, and submitted to your university, to, to the alumni, to the fan base, to the student body, doing their homework. Sometimes they having jobs that Power 5 kids don't have to have. And you can't even put their name on the back of the jersey so the mama or the father or, or grandma name could distinguish, that's my baby? Mm -hmm. She got to say, my number 19 is my baby. No, put that name on the back of their jersey. That name means something. So if, if when we bypass minimal stuff like that, we're going to bypass other things like that. These kids deserve it. I'm just, I just want to fight for every darn thing they deserve. If they get it in Power 5, we should get it too. Jackson State is going up against Tennessee State tomorrow night, 7 p.m., ESPN 3, in Memphis, Tennessee, 32nd Annual Southern Heritage Classic. Primetime, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, is going up against Eddie George, his buddy. What does it mean to you to see Eddie George coaching in HBCU? Oh, man, that's my man. That's my friend. That's one of my confidants. I love it. And uh, before he got the job, he called me and asked me a few questions. And I assured him that he was more than ready and more than prepared. He He's going to change more than the outcome of a football game. He's going to challenge those young men to be men, to be assets to their community. And for us to, and we're not playing the game, but for us to coach against one another and stay on a stage like this, this challenge, other guys that I, I, I played with that I know they have a desire and a, and a want to coach and take men to yet another level. This is just the beginning. Coach George and I and, and so many others that are in the HBC level that are doing HBCU level that are doing a phenomenal job uh, should be recognized as well. We're just mm. getting the bulk of the attention, but you have some, some guys that are doing a phenomenal job out there that played in the NFL as well. Coach, let me transition to the NFL. How how often have you had an opportunity? I'm assuming, did you have a chance to watch that game last night? Cowboys versus the reigning defending Super Bowl I did. champions? I did. And, and, and what thoughts did, did you walk away with, sir, in the aftermath of that game? I, I fell asleep at the end of the game, um, but I then I heard at breakfast this morning that they gave Tom Brady the ball with a minute or something left. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> what, what, who, who does that? Where you do that at? But I'm happy that the Cowboys fought and they – they put up a, a – they should have won. Um, basically, they should have won. And they just had some key errors, key mistakes, and pivotal, vital moments of what I'm told at the conclusion of the matter. But it was a good football game. I'm happy that's the way we set the stage in the NFL, and that's what we expect from here on. I'm happy that football is back. Massive crowd there, obviously. The players were excited. All of us were excited watching on television. How important is it 
to see, or was it, to see that kind of climate, that kind of environment last well, night for NFL football, considering as a nation what we've been through the last 18 months? Wonderful, ecstatic. Uh, it, unity is what I saw. I, I didn't see I didn't see any racial climbers, any, any ignorance or adolescents. I seen just unity. I see I saw the same thing at the uh, Southern Blossom Classic last week in Miami. I, I, that's what I saw. It's something that about sports just brings us together. We don't think Tom Brady is white. We don't think he's black. He's Tom Brady. We don't think Dak is white. Dak is black. Dak is this. That's Dak Prescott, man. That's the Dallas Cowboys. That's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's the Tennessee State. That's the Jackson State. That, that's what we see, and that's what sports does for us. So I'm, I'm, that's why I love this darn game, and I love mm -hmm. what sports does for our country, man. I really do. Before I let you get on out of here, Eddie George is your man. He's your brother, but he's coming for you tomorrow night. What's Jackson State going to do about yep. that, bro? What's Jackson State going to do about that? He's he, he, he coming. He coming. He coming, but I'm here. Uh -huh. He's coming, but I'm here. And, what and I does want that you to know something. And this is what I'm going to tell it is He's coming when I'm here. My people know what that means. And let me tell you this. <laughs> and when it goes down, I just need y'all, because we're playing on your network. Right. Just put us on the ticker. Okay. How much does it cost to put us on the ticker? Can right. we get on the ticker? I I'll just want to sure. know the scores, baby. I'm Give me make, the scores of HBCU. I'm going to make sure you're on the Give ticker. Us, put us on ESPN. Put us on the ticker. I'm going to make sure you're on the ticker. I'm going to make sure you're on the ticker, Prime. That's all I need. Coach Brown, That's I'm going to make need. sure you're on the ticker. All right. Make sure I'm on it. Steve and they say we're going to be on the ticker. That's right. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.